He Plays a Harp is essentially a love story. It's a story about my husband and I and the love for our son Noah and our daughter Tasha. It's a story about disability and about grief, about life, death, moving on. It's a story that will make people laugh, it'll make people cry, and it's a story that um, transcends generations. Noah's disability came on really gradually. Even though he was born with cerebral palsy, there weren't a lot of symptoms until he was about six months old. And so his disability wasn't really sudden. It really kind of crept up on us. And so we just accommodated him as time went on. As he grew older, you know, we learned that he wasn't going to be able to sit up, he wasn't able to walk. There were all kinds of things that Noah couldn't do. But we wanted to make sure there were all kinds of things that Noah could do. And so throughout his life, we ensured that he, he did everything that we were doing to the best of our ability to include him. I really think my identity is much more wrapped up in Noah's now than it probably was when he was alive. And I write about this a little bit in He Plays a Harp. I talk about how I think about him more than I think I ever did when he was alive. I think about um, how he would be or how old he would be or how our life would be if he were still alive. Um, I, he's, he's constantly present in my life and in my mind. And so I think my identity is really, um, is really wrapped up more with his than it probably ever has been. And, um, and I'm really grateful for that um, because now if he were alive, he'd be 24 years old. He would be moving on and away from us and maybe not living with us anymore. Um, but now he lives with us always. So I guess that's you know, the upside of, of, of having him not present. The reason I wrote the book is for, for parents to understand, and not only bereaved parents, but just any parents, um, parents of a child who just wonder or want to, uh, um, want to know but don't want to imagine their own child dying.